Welcome to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, where we uncover the mindset and success strategies of the top 1% so you can amplify your life and your business today. I'm really honored and excited, three-time world champion <laughs> on Making Bank. I want to welcome Nicholas Kuzmich back. Hey, Welcome brother. back to the show, well, man. Well, thank you for letting me be the first, maybe not the only, but the first. <laughs> the first in the series. The first yes. person to be on Making Bang three times in a row. So it, it is an honor. We're setting records. We're making, we're creating history here. And it must mean you have some cool stuff for us today. Well, I sure hope so. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully no one saw the last episode. We'll just talk about all the same stuff. I think we talked about me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, all right, guys. Uh, we got so a really awesome show today. Have your pen and papers ready. Nicholas is going to deliver some amazing content, especially coming off his talk yesterday. He rocked the place. It was standing room only. 200 people outside of the venue. That's I true. think there was like four, five, 600 inside. So pretty crazy, pretty cool stuff, and we're excited today. So yeah. give everybody, I know there's maybe a half a percent of the population yeah, that sure. doesn't know you. Um, give them like an eight to 30 second spiel on what you do. Yeah, Nicholas Kudovich, <laughs> former NASA astronaut flew to the moon did a couple <laughs> trips back no, no. mars uh yeah mars <laughs> going to mars. no I, I um we just got really lucky uh, in a few years ago we were looking for a place to buy media to get mm -hmm. our message out there and to get our clients message out there to the world uh we were in the right place at the right time and it just so happened that we stumbled across this platform called facebook uh facebook yeah we decided to jump two feet in and really own the space. And fortunately, we work with some. Uh, we worked with and continue to work with mm -hmm. some amazing, amazing people. Uh, we're known in the industry as having the highest ROIs in the space, uh, up awesome. to thirty thousand percent return on investment. Um, and yeah, we just we we found a way to make Facebook work for any business owner, and systems and processes that that just make things easier and allow the right business who's looking to scale sure. and get their message out there more. Um, do that and so that's what we focus on we have an agency we have a consultancy we have a membership program all that stuff all around showing people mm -hmm. and helping people get their message out there using Facebook ads cool no, that's awesome and you guys don't or you guys don't just work with coaches and consultants I mean you do product businesses e-com like all that because some people think oh wow 30,000 percent it must be like somebody spending you know 50 can of coaching package right. not not e-com products and that sort of thing so you guys yeah, cover I'm, the whole gamut. Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, we work in with political campaigns, with nonprofit <laughs> campaigns, with uh, e-commerce stuff, with coaching stuff, with membership stuff, with cool. and, you know, like, and that's what I love to say is at the end of the day, if, if you have something that could use growth, right? Uh, Facebook is most likely a channel you could use to get that. It doesn't matter where you play or what you do. Probably ninety nine percent of the time, it's a platform that you could be using. Awesome. Well, I want to kind of start off. I know we got. Facebook had these like recent algorithm changes. Right, sure. and you probably chatted on that a little bit. Yeah. How is that? Have you seen an effect with what you're doing? Yeah. And how have you pivoted or made some changes to capitalize on that? Yeah, that's a great question. And the reality is, for the person who's willing to pay to play, and that's what okay. we do. So we're sure. not we're not doing organic stuff like right. our our space is paid advertising. Paid advertising. Uh, for the people who are willing to pay to play, there was zero effect. The okay. algorithm had zero effect. The only people who are being affected by uh, mm -hmm. The platform right now are those who are uh, built, and I feel for them, built, you know, strong organic presence. Pages, yeah. uh, they never really decided to go into the paid space of things, um, and, and now they're feeling it. Mm, uh, okay. but, but if you're willing to pay to play, uh, Facebook has honored and, and continues to honor those types sure. of, of, of businesses. Okay. Um, so zero Good. effect, <laughs> I'm happy to say, zero effect on, on anyone who knows what they're doing. Awesome. And no, no uh, cost increase, anything like that? Minimal or? Well, yeah, it's a great question. And I think what people have to realize is in general, um, Facebook costs and advertising costs are going to go up. Right. I mean, you're not paying today what you paid four years ago. For sure. Um, so definitely costs are rising, but that's not because of algor algorithmic changes. Right. Um, that's just, like you said, real estate. It's yeah. supply and demand, yeah. and as a result of that, uh, you know, every business owner should be prepared over time to see increased costs of, of advertising. Um, real quick, I want to dive into a little bit. I know we were talking off stage for a minute. Uh, some of the top of the funnel stuff that you're doing, because well, since we have a variety of different businesses that watch this, entrepreneurs and everything, some yeah. may be coaching, some are a lot of them are e-com products, things yeah. like that. Yeah. What are you seeing that's really working now? Yeah. And it's something that they can take and start applying today. Yeah, I love that. So we've really dialed in a system that I call like the 3C Invisible Influence. Formula. Okay. 
Uh, the reason why I call it because the three C's are how to get the click, how to capture the lead, and then how to convert that into a sale. Sure. So that's our three C's. Um, and we've tested this in every industry possible. So e-commerce, uh, service-based stuff, sure. uh, coaching, consulting, information, it doesn't matter. We have found that this kind of process really works. So okay. I can, can kind of walk through it a little bit. Sure, and yeah. And stop, me and, yeah and stop me in anywhere if we need to expand. Okay. Later. Um, so first is the click. It's the right. realization that the entire function and purpose of an ad, and here's where a lot of people miss it, a lot of people think that the goal of an ad is to make a sale. Mm, okay. The goal of the ad is to simply do one thing and one thing only, and that's get a click. See, okay. in every part of the process, we have sure. to realize that that part of the process is designed to do a certain task. Okay. Right. So if you have a landing page, that's designed to capture a lead. If you have an ad, it's designed to get a click. If you have a sales page, it's designed to get a sale. Now, okay. any time you mix any of that up, sure. you're going to see uh, diminishing results. Okay. So when you have an ad that you're trying to sell something with, well, you're like three steps too early. So first and foremost, we want to get the click. Right. Okay. How do we get the click? Well, I mean, I have a whole 11 stage ad writing formula, but let's just kind of go af over some very basic, basic stuff. stuff. Sure. Um, 80% of the success of your ad is gonna come down to selecting the right visual. Okay. Call it video or image, let's call it image. Okay. So we even the playing field, because not everybody can do video, right. so let's say image. Well, what can we do to an image to get a click? Sure. Uh, or capture attention. Right. Now, I mean, I always say, and the analogy I use is, uh, hey look, if you're looking to hide a tree, where's the best place to hide it? The answer is in a forest. Right. Why, because it just blends in. If that is the case, let's envision the Facebook news feed as a forest. Okay. And let's see images as trees. Okay. So if you're just scrolling through your news feed and you see image after image, after, now first of all, you should be using images, right? Because <laughs> everyone's ignoring right. copy or text. But if you see image after image after image after image, what about your image is gonna have it pop and stand sure. out? Well, I think one of the easiest things to do, and people just undermined the simplicity of this. Um, but my friend Gerald uh, has an e-commerce product. He supply he he deployed this thing, and all of a sudden went from zero sales to 50k in sales. Wow! His words, not yeah, mine. Right. Um, a, a girl Jenna who deployed this in a seminar business ended up using this one simple trick and going from zero registrants to selling out her seminars. And here's the wow. trick. Think about this. Okay. If you're scrolling through your news feed, your news feed, your news feed, and all you see is color image after color image after color image after color image. Sure. What could you do to have it stand out? Well, what we say is, why don't you just drop the thing in a photo editor and go black and white with it? Nice. Now, all of a sudden, black yeah. and white images are popping right. in the news feed because all they see is color image after color image after color image. Sure. Remember, the name of the game is first to capture attention and get the click. So one of the simple things, again, that we suggest everybody is just experiment with this. Right. All of your images are black and white. It's not going to work. <laughs> but the idea Here is always to, yeah, yeah. always to be thinking about, okay, well... How, if I know that my image is a tree, how do I get a tree to stand out in a forest? Sure. There's, there's things you can do, but that's one of them. Awesome. So taking that, and so I know we have our Facebook team, and I know they're probably listening. <laughs> <laughs> we want to do, take those images and make them really stand out. In and one way, shape, or form. One yeah. way, shape, or form, whether yeah. it's black and white, whether it's, I mean, what are some other ideas? Yeah, well, well, really what about, uh, what about uh, you've ever seen those images that are all black and white except the one, one umbrella? Spot. That's right. red. Right. Now all of a sudden you've got another better. thing yeah. popping up, For right? Sure. Or maybe you've seen cinematographs. Cinematographs, yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. idea where like guys pouring coffee, everything is is uh, an image, but it's the coffee that's moving. That's like moving. one element right. of the images. Those are called okay. cinematographs. Right. Those pop like crazy. Yeah. So I mean, there's just oh, you can increase the contrast of an image. Sure. And simply by so doing that, all of a sudden it's not just kind of blending in; it's popping out. Right. Um, so always just be thinking about like what can I and let me say this, Josh. Don't add a bloody pink fluorescent border around your image and be like, that's how you get attention. Boom. Yeah, that just screams like I'm a marketer who doesn't know what I'm doing. Right. So don't go that far. Uh, but think like, what can you do to a great image already sure. that just has to stand out a little bit? Well, and one of the big things for me, and I was talking to somebody the other day, was um, with, on mobile, Yeah. you need to increase the contrast sure. and lighten. Right. So increase it, and it actually makes it stand out more on mobile. Right. Yeah. And a lot of with so much mobile pushing to, you know, your mobile feed, 
you know, and you want to drive those people to stop and click right. on it to get through. So right. that was when they were like, oh, wow, I never even thought of that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So we got some, all right, so we got some great things to make our ad pop. Right. In order to get the click. To get the click. So we're, we're in the click spot right now. Right. Now, the cool. next thing is once they click, where do they go to? Right. So they're going to a landing page. And I think one of the greatest mistakes that most people make on Facebook is they violate what I call the number one rule of marketing online. Okay. And the number one rule is why I wrote a book with the title. But the number one rule, I believe, on marketing online is that you must give before you ask. Okay. And so most people's ads sound something like this. Hey, I got you something to sell. Come buy it. And right. you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know you. Sure. Well, well, yeah, I, well, hello. Right. Um, so we believe that Facebook is a great opportunity for you to start relationships. Okay. And the best way to start a relationship with someone that you don't know is give them some sort of value right. that's gonna benefit their life. Okay. Everybody's on a journey, they're going from point A to point Z. If you can help them go from point A to point B, sure. they're gonna appreciate you. Right. They're gonna know, like, and trust you. They're okay. gonna continue that conversation to the point where they're saying, yeah, you know what? I wanna transact with that person. So how do we do that? I say you give them something of value in the form of a lead magnet. Okay. Typically a downloadable PDF, um, could be a cheat sheet, an execution guide, a blueprint, a, a template, sure. something that's going to literally help. And maybe you create smoothies and you are in the health space. Right. Why don't you give three or four of your best recipes? Mm -hmm. Like okay. simple, easy to apply, get going. And now all of a sudden you are becoming seen as a value contributor to your community. Got it. And you're starting the relationship. So you have an ad that basically goes to a page that says, I got this great thing that I think would really benefit sure. you. Uh, let me know where to send it. And now with that, so say that you're going to give them something like a, a checklist sure. or you know uh, something they're opting in for. Yeah. Does that work with like e-commerce products? Yeah, great okay. question. So uh, one of our clients uh, sells um, essential oils, okay, aromatherapy sure. and essential oils. Right. Um, so what what they did was like they used to just try to sell this package of like stress relieving aromatherapy oils in a diffuser. Okay. They sold it for however much money they did, and they're trying to sell direct. Now, did they make a few sales? Yes. Sure. Um, but when they came and said, "Well, how can we deploy this type of understanding to our e-commerce?" Right. Play? Um, I said, "Well, what uh, what what are your ideal people looking for?" Sure. And they said, "Well, they're looking for stress relief using essential oils." Right. So I was like, "Great. Um, can you tell me the top five essential oils you would recommend to me if I was looking okay. to reduce my stress. They sure. said, absolutely. I said, well, spin that up in a one-page PDF and let's call it like the five best stress-reducing essential oils. Right, okay. Um, create that as a PDF and now they offer that and now the person's like, wow, before this person even tried to sell me anything, sure. they actually tried to provide some reduce benefit. Some. Right, awesome. so, so works in the e-commerce yeah. space. So, so say you have a tooth powder product. Sure. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> Just say somebody did. Yeah. <laughs> what, you know, would, and, and they were driving traffic right to the order sure. form now. Yeah. What would you think in your head would say, cool, what can I put before that yeah. to then give them something right. to then get them interested? So, one of two things, and this is what I like about the e commerce space. One is asking, like, the person looking for a tooth powder product, what are they actually looking for? Sure. Are they looking for teeth whitening? Are they looking for more organic, natural ways instead of putting fluoride in right. their mouth and killing Using, themselves? Yeah. Uh, like, what are they actually looking for? And sure. then reverse engineering to say, like, what can I create then that's going to give them that thing Got without it. the product, okay. essentially. Sure. So let's say let's say it's teeth whitening. Right. I don't know if it is, but let's say that that's one of the benefits. Sure. Um, then I'd be saying, okay, well, what can I offer in the form of information that's going to help them understand the benefits? And I might even create a, a PDF that says, like, the one ingredient you probably don't know about that's non-toxic to your body that increases three levels of teeth teeth shades in, in a matter of 30 days. Right. Something like that. Okay, sure. Let's say that that's okay. it. Um, so I would lead with that. Because right. now you, you have your ideal prospect. You have someone who's health conscious, non-toxic, right. uh, looking for teeth whitening, yeah. they care about the whole thing, and now they're like, well, okay, so there's an ingredient that I might not know about that's not baking soda or sure. whatever that can help me out. And they then take that next step, okay. uh, engage with you, Cool. and then can we transition to what happens next? Definitely. So, yeah. e-commerce or whatever. Okay. Here's the thing. Most people, so they clicked on an they ad. They clicked on it. They go to a landing page that says, let me give you this free thing. Right. Give me your name and your email. I'll send it to wherever you want me to send it. Sure. Then they get to the next page, which for the sake of a lack of a better term, let's call it a thank you page. Okay. Because uh, usually that's where people say thank you. Now, the worst <laughs> thing you can do on that page is say thank you. Right. Right? It's like, oh, here's the thing you asked for. See you later. Right. 
Because think about the momentum that was built to get that person there. Oh, yeah. They're scrolling through their news feed. They stop. They see your black and white image. like, damn. They read the copy. like, oh, they click. Right. Now, just getting that far. That's hard. You you literally stop yeah. someone in their day. Sure. Then they get over to the landing page, and you're saying, like, hey, get this thing that shows you how to you whiten your teeth with, you know, this mystery product, uh, this mystery ingredient, whatever. They're like, huh, they read it. And now they've given you personal information. Sure. In order to get that thing. Right. Okay. So there's this huge amount of like forward momentum because you know this person now is interested in right. something related. Mm. The worst thing you can do is like, see you later. Thanks. <laughs> right. Right. So what I say then is on that thank you page, you make what I call a godfather offer. Okay. And a godfather offer is an offer that they can't refuse. Right. <laughs> it's, it's an right. incredible offer that for the right person sure. who is interested in this type of thing, what can you offer them right then and there? While they're there, yeah. To say, well, damn, that's pretty hard to refuse. Sure. So let's say in the teeth whitening thing, maybe it's a it's a, a free plus shipping right. offer. Like it's a like a free month supply. Get a free month supply. You just cover the shipping right. and put them on a continuity thing on the back. Okay. Whatever. Maybe if it's in the information space, you sell a course or something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, maybe it's a discount to a course. Or okay. maybe if you buy the course, you get a free gold iPad. Right. Maybe that would be pretty sweet. that's pretty sweet. <laughs> someone, sh- someone should think about that. Um, like, but the case in point is like, what can you do to really sweeten a deal, make it a godfather right. offer? And what that does is it allows for the right person to say yes to you. Mm, okay. But how do you do it in such a way where the wrong person doesn't feel Push offended away. by saying no? Right. And so what I like to do, and we can get into a lot of deep psychology around this, but essentially it's you offer something, you position it in such a way like, hey. For the right person, if you want to take advantage of this, I want to let you in on how you can do that in a great way. Sure. And 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 here's the key thing: we say you don't have to make the decision now. Mm. We give okay. them a little window to do that. Okay. Because I don't know if you've ever been in a scenario where someone's like, "Buy this, buy this now, or you'll never get Three it again." Left. Yeah. <laughs> then you're like, "Whoa." Yeah. Right. And if I don't buy it, then I feel offended, and I'm like, mm. okay. "So what if you gave them a window? Let's call it two or three days." Sure. Where you say, "You know what? Do your due diligence." Look up, look us up on the internet. Right. Talk to your significant other because I know like the four dollar investment is a big investment, <laughs> whatever it be. But like, right. think about it, see if it's right for you. Sure. Um, and then come back within that time frame, and you can take us up on that. Now, once that time goes, you don't get that offer anymore. Right. But you have a little bit of time to think okay. through that. So the idea is they've clicked, they've got some free information to start that relationship with. Sure. A percentage of those people are going to be ready to engage with you now, and as long as you make a really sweet Godfather offer. Um, a percentage of those people who are going to say yes. Now, those who don't say yes, right. you still build that relationship with them because you have their name and their email. Right. Give them more free value content and everything. Exactly. Okay. Now, the last kind of p- phase in all this, and I'll just kind of throw it out there for people to think about, is like you can say, hey, you got three days to get this thing, and then you ignore them, and you hope they remember to come back and like right. get the thing, which even that will work pretty good. Okay. But what if you send them three emails and show them three ads in those three days? Right. Now, all of a sudden, you're just in front of them and you're reminding them, by the way, remember that tooth powder thing that you wanted? You only have a day left to get uh, it. Okay. Right? I'm just, sure. just, a, just a gentle reminder. Right. Um, and all of a sudden we see conversion rates, and I don't know how much number crunchers <clears throat> we have here, but we literally see conversion rates go from 6% to 23% on cold wow. traffic in that three day window because we're simply reminding them with three ads and three emails. Huh. Okay. And this system, I mean, I know we went through it very briefly and I take two days to teach it at our intensive, but this system, of literally click, right. capture, convert. Okay. Following this step-by-step formula, you can sell e-commerce products, you can sell coaching, you can sell seminars, you can raise money for non-profit. Like right. this is what works like literally every time when deployed properly. That's awesome. And so with what so when uh, you they get the free gift, yep. whatever it may be, yep. then they go to their godfather offer. Yep. What kind of conversions do you see there? Because you kind of give them that window ad you know cool you don't have to do it right sure, now sure so so right off the bat we're mm-hmm. 10 i mean if it's a real good godfather offer, right. that's the key so we'll say let's say coaching then we'll say econ products so because they're obviously going to be different sure yeah. sure well actually the conversion rate is typically the same really the price points okay. are a little bit different right but um, you're still seeing the but same. yeah we like okay. to see or we can see up to six percent on the high end okay about three percent on the low on the end. low end okay yeah. and 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 just for perspective, like in a traditional sales scenario, if you're running an ad to a sales page, right, um, you're killing it if you're doing one percent. Okay. Right. So now what we're doing is 
the combination of letting them know that it's limited for sure. a, couple, a little bit of time, that it is in fact a special Godfather offer, right. it's not something readily available to the public, will give you those short bumps of okay. three to six percent on the front. Right. And then as the rest of that three days plays out, bam, you just start to then see more. Then you see more that 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, up to, up to, yeah, right, not every single one. Of course, but, but, in but we've range. seen as high as. Wow, those numbers, cool. Yeah. Awesome. And what, and I know we probably touched base on it past interviews, but when you're doing all that, what's the typical number of, I guess, ads that you're testing and things like that that you really find that works well for you? Yeah, I, well, so at the end of the day, I don't think there's a magic number. Okay. It's just the realization that you better you bloody be testing stuff. Right. Because we've been surprised. We'll run two exact identical ads sure. to the exact audience. Right. And one image will be black and white, and one will be the, the color. Sure. The same image. Right. And one will get us leads for 80 cents, and the other will be three bucks. And you're like, wait, same copy, same yeah. image, same everything, just one's black and white and one's color. Mm. Okay. So the case in point is you test. Right. You want to run a couple of variations. You want to see how they do. You want to run a couple of audiences, see how they do. And then as you start to find the winners, then you can kind of start scaling those up. Sure. Um, but if you're relying on one ad to like run this puppy for you for, I mean, <laughs> you don't know that you could be leaving stuff on the table. Yeah. yeah. And one uh, question with all that, so you have your ad. Yep. Then how congruent do you make the ad to the landing page, the landing page to the Godfather offer? Uh, it's a great question, and it, some people call that the ad scent or the ad trail. Okay. But the idea is everything should be in line and congruent. Okay. Uh, and that doesn't mean you have, need to use the exact same images on but every page. Very similar. But the uh, idea is the tone, the colors, okay. the fonts, the right. Because it's if you have this like image that's like popping and it's very like harsh colors like reds or whatever, sure. and then you get to landing page and that's like dark blues, the mind. Especially if I don't trust you and I don't know right, you. Anyways, it's like, yeah. well, just like, whoa, that Big seems difference. a little off. Sure. So all of a sudden, without them even knowing subconsciously, the mind is like, this seems unsafe. Mm. And you start okay. to see your conversion rate is low. Right. So congruency is key. The more you can kind of keep things in line with each other, um, the better off you're going to be. Cool. Awesome. I know we only got a couple minutes left. Sure. So let's tell a little bit where people can find out about you. Yeah. And then uh, one last question. Yeah, frankly, so I think that I'm the only Nicholas Kuzmich in the entire world, <laughs> uh, at least on Facebook. So it's very easy to find me on Facebook, nicholaskuzmich.com. The NK. The NK, baby, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, nicholaskuzmich.com is our, kind of our site proper. If you want to learn about the council, something that we're talking about, or how to get a free iPad, uh, nicholaskuzmich.com. Who took that offer? Who did that offer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, nicholaskuzmich.com slash the council. But, but literally, that's the hub, and that's the space. Okay. Or if you want to interact with me on Facebook, uh, Facebook Marketing Mastery is my okay. free Facebook group. Cool, and there's a ton of free content it's there. Just, yeah, right. I mean, that's where we engage and spend our, our time kind of having community conversations. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then just, I guess, last question is, what do you want to leave our audience with that you think is significant to help impact them in the marketing world? I wouldn't even say the marketing world. I think just as a business owner. A business owner. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, stop chasing shiny objects. Uh, and just, just, just find the, you know, people call it essentialism, call it one sure. thing, whatever. Bloody hell, find the one thing that's going to move the needle the most for you this year. Focus on it and then just get it done. Like I, yeah. I, 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 there's so many conversations I have with business owners who are like doing this and that and the other and I heard about this and what about this and let's try that and let's go after this. And so as a result, you're doing a bunch of things but not making any forward progress. For sure. The thing that changed the game for me was when I said, this is the thing I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to focus on. This is going to move the needle the most for me. Um, so if you want to make bank, get focused, find the thing, get it to completion and then move to the other thing. Awesome. Well, it was an honor to have you on I love three, it, times. three times. History was made today, <laughs> folks. I really appreciate all your time. Of course, brother. Everything. So thank you for coming thank on you, Making Josh. Bank. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Hey, guys, you were watching Making Bank. Get out and be extraordinary. <laughs>